minutes, whatever, minute or so. All right, so we are live right now. We'll wait a minute or so. Let some folks come in here with uh, Ryan Bundy out here at the Clark County Fairgrounds. Ryan Bundy for governor, nonpartisan and independent. And this is uh, this is one of the steers that uh, one of your your children are. Have yeah, this is one of my daughter's steers. I have two steers that are in the fair today. Uh, invite y'all to come out to Clark County Fair in Logandale, Nevada, and come uh, watch the show steers and some pigs and sheep. But come visit my booth and learn why I'm running for governor. Yeah, so the booth is uh, 341, is that correct? I believe so, yes. And uh, that's back by the beer garden and back by the barns to come back to the livestock. So back in the corner, and uh, come on out, and Ryan's needing some more signatures to get on the ballot, so that's not a lock-in yet. No. Nope. And, and uh, your your campaign manager, her name, her name is Denise Mraz. Mraz. She's doing a great job. She's got a lot of um, metal works out here, and uh, we're trying to raise money for you to uh, for all the campaign stuff you need, and banners, and all that stuff. A lot involved in this, and we really need your help. And uh, if you're in Vegas or Clark County or anywhere in Nevada for that matter and a registered voter and voted in the last election, I'd like you to come on down and uh, lend your support for, for Ryan. Uh, tell us some of the issues that you're standing on, Ryan. Well, first and foremost is the, uh, the land rights issue in Nevada and state sovereignty. Nevada is simply not a state. And so all our wealth comes from land and resources, and it belongs to the people of Nevada. Nevada needs to be able to utilize it and uh, make good use of it. Um, currently, the federal government is claiming. Okay, it's going again. Stop them. All right. Currently, the federal government is claiming nearly 90% of the the land mass in Nevada, and that does not uh, is not consistent with. Constitution nor state sovereignty. So you're, you're going to stand on the Constitution and, and law and try to restore some of the uh, rights and that, that we've lost over time here. Yes. Now, well, what will you tell people the first thing you're going to do when you become governor? <laughs> I don't like answering that question. Okay, that's good enough. You're, you're going to have quite a job ahead of you. Yes. So restoring the, the land rights. And uh, what else? About, how, how about some of these federal agencies that have occupied our land out here? Well, uh, that's all the same thing. If the land belongs to the state and their people, then there's no room for federal agencies to be upon it. They will peacefully depart. And how do you feel about conservation and the uh, environment? Well, you know, I say that I'm a true environmentalist. I do believe in um, a healthy environment. Okay, but a healthy environment doesn't mean one that's not being used. And that's the difference between these wacko environmentalists that believe that everything has to be stopped, that all human activity has to be stopped. And that's that's just not not correct. Now, Kieran Suckling for the Center for Biological Diversity, he kicked this off back in the 90s, saying how the tortoise was endangered and being harmed by the, the cattle on the land. I'd like to clear that up maybe some if you would. Sure, he didn't kick us off. We're still there. No, I mean, he initiated it. I'm, I'm talking about now how, how the cattle is, is supposedly harmed by, or the tortoise is harmed by the cattle, where, in fact, uh, my investigation leads me to believe that uh, not only they're not harmed, but they're benefited a great deal. Yeah, there's no scientific proof that cattle and tortoises cannot co co coexist in peace. In fact, uh, particularly sheep are beneficial to tortoise, but the cattle are also beneficial to tortoise. There's no, there's no conflict there. That's a fallacy. Yeah. Now, uh, let's say if we use some of these words, overgraze. Would it be uh, possible to overgraze the desert, the burrow brush, and uh, all the other little fine grays that come on in the spring? Yeah, it could be possible, but uh, not under the current conditions, or you know, not under current conditions. There's hardly any cattle out there. But uh, overgrazing is <clears throat> is mostly a fallacy, also. Um, Anyway, yeah, it could happen, though. Um, I've seen an example of where cattle have grazed uh, uh, on, on some of the, the vegetation out there. I've seen where four-wheelers run bushes back, and it seems like the comes back even that much better, the, the green. Well, the, the brush and out there in the hills are much like your rosebush 
your in your garden. If it's not pruned, it doesn't produce. And so the brush that's eaten down by the cattle or even run over by a, a, a truck or a four-wheeler, it just grows back greener and prettier like your rose bush would after it's pruned. Now you're going to be speaking tonight at the uh, Republican... Uh, okay, and that's at uh, 5 p.m. I believe. Yes. All right. So anybody out in Mesquite there and uh, like to come by again tonight there, if you can get in. Got to wait. Looks like at the back. Cut out on us. So come out and lend your support for Ryan Bundy for governor. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Pleasure knowing you. Glad to support you. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate y'all tuning in. A little short one here. We're out here, and uh, this is uh, one of Bundy's, uh, Ryan's uh, daughters. Steer. Don't we'll raise a reserve grand champion, huh? What you doing, man? No. Straight ahead. Producers on the land, that's what we'd like to see in charge, I guess, right? Hey, right. you're welcome to uh, share this video, download it, and upload it. Appreciate the attribution for uh, myself, Vincent Easley II, and RealLibertyMedia.com. Come visit us at rlmradio.xyz. Thanks, everybody.